Hi everybody, welcome back. Just a quick uh, update video uh, from part nine where uh, I finished the undercarriage uh, on this Mosquito kit. And I promised then that I'd come back and just finish off the work that I didn't get a chance to do last Friday, which was to get the wing section mated to the fuselage. And that's what I'm going to do today so that we can uh, get the aeroplane standing on all three wheels. So the first thing I've done here is to fit this nut which is behind this piece of plastic. So it's a captive nut and that is to allow a screw which goes through this hole here. This hole will be covered by the dinghy hatch uh, at later stage in the build but the screw goes through there and provides a really solid fixing of the wing to the fuselage. So that's been done and it's set for a couple of days now so I know that it's absolutely solid. The nut's not going to pull out when I tighten the screw up. So the wing section's all ready to go. In terms of the fuselage, uh, I still want to do a little bit on the fuselage before we bring the wing and the fuselage together and that's just to make sure that the seam line top and bottom is perfectly clean. I don't want to be doing any sanding once this uh, fuselage has got the wing on it because it's quite a big model and it's just a lot more cumbersome so I'd rather get this seam top and bottom cleaned up uh, while the fuselage is in this state. So I'm going to do that now. It's had a first rub down uh, and I've been very careful around these light sections here, which are inserts in the Tamiya kit. I think I'm going to have to do a little bit more work uh, once I see what the primer's like. But the first step is to see how much work we've got to do. So I'll get that coat of primer on. I'm going to be using some Mr. Surface uh, 1500. Uh, just gently misted on to the seam line top and bottom and we'll see what more work there is to do on it. That Mr Surface has gone on pretty well and actually there's not as much work as I thought there might be uh, in terms of second coat filling. So uh, that's quite a good result really. There's one or two very fine irregularities here and here. But the one thing I was worried about was the seams around these lamp fittings here and here just behind the bomb bay but they're perfectly clean so I'm pretty happy with those so I've just got a little bit more work to do there on the top there's a very faint ghost of a seam uh, in one or two places so just another rub down with this sanding sponge a very fine sanding sponge should sort that out and of course the Mr Surfacer acts as a bit of a filler as well. The 1500 I think is the thinnest that Mr Hobby do in the Surfacer range but it's enough to fill in these very fine uh, gaps here. You can just see it emerging here at the back where the Mr Surfacer is staying in the gap. Well, I'm calling it a gap, it's not really. So you can just see here there's maybe a trace of the Mr. Surfacer in the join line. But generally that's going to come out alright, I'm pretty sure. I think that's pretty close now. I'll give that another coat of Mr. Surfacer, just see if the uh, faults have disappeared. Okay, second coat primer. There's still a little bit showing on the seam here, just in front of this hole. So that needs a little bit more on it, but uh, we're getting there. The main thing when working on seams is just to make sure that the joint's actually fully set. Uh, it's not a problem in this case. This fuselage has been assembled for about three weeks, so this glue join is going to be very solid. So it's fine to do the sanding work, but 
if you try to sand this within 12 or 24 hours of making the join you might find that you get the ghost seams that are so difficult to remove later on in the process. So because of all the other work that I've had to do on the wings and engines and so on on this build it's given this fuselage an awful long time to set up so I'm pretty confident uh, about doing this seam work without the risk of those ghost seams as we call them uh, reappearing later on. So this here at the front is just been a little bit stubborn but it's just a case of working with the Mr Surfacer until you get to the stage where it's filled in those imperfections and you're ready for the top coats. The thing with the fuselage on the Mosquito, which is so smooth it being covered in plywood, is uh, you don't want any trace of a seam. So it's worth paying attention and uh, getting this just right. Okay, so that's taken uh, three coats of the Mr. Surfacer to eliminate all those seams. And that's now a nice join ready for the top coats. This circular hole here is filled with this round panel, which is moulded in that way so we don't have a seam line to correct uh, across that circular panel. It's a much neater way of uh, approaching the assembly. So I'm happy with the fuselage joins. As you'll appreciate because of the amount of work uh, and handling that that fuselage has had uh, to get rid of those seams it would have been much more difficult to do that with the wings attached. So the next thing I'm going to do is get the tail wheel assembly sorted out and get the model in a place where we can fit the horizontal stabiliser. So this is the horizontal stabiliser with the tailwheel mudguard uh, in place. I built this uh, quite a few episodes ago, probably three or four, and I built the elevators in the uh, drooped position. So uh, that's ready to go, but we've got to make the tailwheel yoke first of all. The tailwheel leg upper part is already installed. The tailwheel is all ready to go. This is the uh, yoke, obviously in two halves, which presents a little bit of a problem because the axle for the tailwheel is full width. And that means that you have to assemble the uh, yoke around the tailwheel. So I'm going to have to paint that first uh, before assembling it, which isn't ideal because it uh, makes it more difficult to make sure that the seams are not showing. Okay, we can get this uh, tailwheel assembly sorted out now. So actually that's gone together fairly well. The seam is present but it would be virtually impossible to get rid of that seam uh, here where the cutout is. You'd have to use a piece of plastic card but I really don't think it's worth it. Uh, the tail wheel is fairly concealed under the fuselage anyway so I'm not going to worry about that too much. So I'll get the elevators 
fitted now. Just got a bit too much cement on there. I don't want the cement oozing out onto the uh, stabiliser or the elevator, so just be careful with that. Get the right one. Get the right one eventually. It's a nice clean join, no cement coming out of there, which is good. While I'm waiting for those elevators to set, this uh, frame fits on the inside just above the mudguard. But there's just a bit of detail painting to do on that with some black. Put the tailplane on now and the contact point just needs cleaning off. I've got some paint on there so I just think it's good practice to get rid of the paint before we put the cement on. I know not everybody does remove the paint from joining surfaces. I do wherever I can. The glue can burn through and you can still get a decent bond but this just makes absolutely sure that you've got a plastic to plastic join. There are a couple of uh, fairings which go on the underside here but I'm not going to be bothering fitting those just yet and the tail wheel just pushes into position I'm not uh, even going to glue that. Might be nice to display the model eventually with the tail wheel just slightly turned just to add a bit of uh, animation we'll see how that looks. These are the two fairings that will fit later on in the build. Just before putting the wing onto the fuselage, I'll just uh, fit this bulkhead. Just fills the back of the cockpit behind the crew seats. The fixings that Tamiya provide here, so these pegs that lie in the troughs. They're a really good way of fixing a part like that because it just helps you uh, avoid getting glue on the joint and it'd be easy to do that. This part is provided in stainless steel in the kit.
Okay, so with the fuselage prepped and the rear deck uh, all fitted, we've just got the radio equipment to go in. We, we can do that later on. So I'll now join the fuselage and there's a way of doing this. You have to tilt the wing backwards Bring the fuselage in from the front, like that. And eventually it will drop down. And just the screw in the dinghy hatch. And that brings the wing and the fuselage together and the join line along the wing route is absolutely perfect there as you might expect by now with this kit. So there we are all caught up from part nine. That's where I wanted to be really last week but uh, as you know if you've seen that episode I just ran out of time. So we're all caught up. And I'll just get one or two photographs of the aeroplane as she stands now. So in the next episode, which I'll premiere on Friday night, I'll be building the 20mm gun pack, which fits in the uh, forward end of the bomb bay. So usual time, 8 o'clock. Uh, photographs coming up of this, but uh, I'll see you next time, everybody. Thanks for joining. Bye for now.